This video is sponsored by Capture One. Capture One has a variety of features that you can utilize to improve your portrait workflow. In this video, I want to break down and give you an insight as to how I'm using speed keys and how I customize my personal workspace to be more efficient, as well as how I use auto masks and how to apply selection to a mask. Let's go ahead and break this down and let's cover todo el pedo. On this first image, I want to show you how I'm utilizing auto masks, the speed keys, and style brushes to finalize my image. So on this image here, you'll see that the background is overexposed. And this is where I want to show you a perfect example of where auto masks comes in the clutch. So if I push B on the keyboard, I get my brush tool. So I'm going to get my brush tool. And you'll see that I have a feature called auto mask. I'm going to uncheck it real quick. So all I did is I right click so I can get my adjust brush settings. And I'm going to show you what it looks like if I have this feature off. Now, what I want to do right now also is I want to show you some new keyboard shortcuts that I'm utilizing. So if I press control one, that will make a empty layer. Previously, I was having to come over here, push this drop down arrow and then empty layer and new field layer. So what I've done is I've come into edit and then keyboard shortcuts. And I've come in and I've gone to my layer options and I've assigned keyboard shortcuts. So I can't emphasize this enough. If you guys are noticing that you're having to click buttons, see if you can utilize keyboard shortcuts to make that much faster. So pressing control one for me makes a blank layer. I'm going to name this layer clouds. And what I want to do is I want to start brushing on the background. So if I push B on the keyboard, if I have auto mask off, what you're going to see is as I'm trying to brush in this selection, right, it starts to bleed into the subject, right? And so, of course, I can get the eraser and say, okay, well, I want to erase the adjustment on the subject. But then you'll see we start to get a little bit of ghosting there, right? Doesn't look good at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear my mask. Now, let me show you what it looks like when I have auto mask. So I right click as long as I have my brush tool. I'm going to check mark auto mask. And what I want to do now is I want to show you how it works. So I'm going to start brushing and I'm going to brush a little bit over the jacket and I'm going to let go and look what happens. It starts to detect based on the color and the brightness and it makes these complex selections for me. So having this feature for um, a process right now where I'm trying to just select the background because it's overexposed is really helpful and then beneficial. So I'm going to go ahead and continue brushing around my subject. And once again, it'll detect the edges. And then I'll go ahead and I'll finish this off really quick. So now that I have my selection of the background, because it's overexposed, so I'm making this mask so that I can reduce the exposure and the brightness. And so the old way of me working was utilizing these little boxes here to the right. And so there's nothing wrong with this, but let me just show you how maybe a little bit uh, less efficient it is because I have to scroll up and down and then I have to find the exact slider that I want to use. So in this case, I want to use highlights. So I would have to look to my right, then drag it to the left and then put my eyes back right in the center and make those adjustments. And of course, like, yes, I can do this, but at the same time, it is a little bit slower having to find each section and then drag it to its proper placement. So what I've been utilizing lately is something called speed keys. So for example, instead of moving my cursor to the right, what I can do is I can hold A on the keyboard. And if I hold it down, what you'll see is at the bottom, it says highlight. Now I can leave my cursor wherever I want and I can drag it left or right. And what's great about this is that I can simply focus now directly on the image and just drag my cursor left and right. Now I also want to utilize the brightness and I want to reduce it. So I'm going to push E on the keyboard. E is for brightness and I'm going to hold it down and you'll see it says brightness down here and I'm going to drag it to the left and reduce some of the brightness as well. Now if I push, hold, push and hold Q on the keyboard, that's my exposure. I'm going to go ahead and bring that down and I'm going to reduce it to 45. Now, if you want to see where these speed keys are located, I can go to edit, edit keyboard shortcuts, and you'll see right here, there's a separate column that says edit keyboard shortcuts. And you'll see 
that all of the keyboard shortcuts have been labeled for you. Now, if you wanna change them, by all means, go ahead and do so, but I like the way they're laid out because my left hand is properly already placed right on the home row keys, and if I move up, I get the exposure adjustments. If I leave them on the home row keys, I get the high dynamic range. If I come down, I get the clarity, and if I go up, I get my white balance and my tint. So as I'm still working with the speed keys, I also want to adjust the white balance because I have the selection once again. I'm going to hold and push the number one on the keyboard. And what I want to do is I want to reduce the number to about 41 Kelvin. So I'm going to bring this down. Let's go maybe about 42, 36 looks good. So if I hit Y on the keyboard, the shortcut to see the before and after, you'll see this is the before. And then the after was able to bring back some details, but also bring back some colors, okay? Now, one thing I wanna show you is that sometimes the auto mask feature, even though it did a great job with the subject, it's not doing such a good job down here. So what I wanna do is I wanna get the E on the keyboard, the eraser. And of course, I'm gonna take off auto mask because it's trying to detect those edges and it's trying to blend it off, but it's not doing a perfect job. And I'm gonna bring my flow down to about 39. And I'm going to go ahead and just slowly just reduce that and just blend that in. Okay. And then we'll do that to the left side. And I'll just slowly blend that off and make it just a little bit bigger. And there we go. So once again, let's push Y on the keyboard before and then the after. Now that I've shown you some of the features of the speed keys, let me show you how I utilize this also with the radial gradient. So now that I've already focused on the clouds, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new layer, but instead of coming over here once again to add a new field adjustment, I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut that I assigned, which was control two. And now I have a new field adjustment layer. And what I wanna utilize is the radial or linear gradient mask. And I'm gonna go ahead and click and then drag. So what I want is I wanna focus my attention on the subject from the right side, it's bright, and I wanna darken this up. So we're gonna utilize one of the speed keys that we just learned was holding Q on the keyboard, and now I'm gonna reduce the exposure ever so slightly off to the left. So if I hit this check mark, this is the before and then the after, just making it a little bit darker. And if I need to, I can make some adjustments if I want to. I'm gonna go ahead and name this, I'm just gonna name this gradient. And then the last thing, and I mentioned this in my last YouTube video, I want to reduce some of the brightness on the jacket and on the hand. So a lot of the light hit the jacket and the hand. So I wanna reduce some of the brightness and I wanna get a style brush. So I'm gonna come in here. And if you wanna know more about style brushes, you can check out my last video where I talk about it. And what I wanna do is I wanna come into light and contrast and I wanna get something called burn, which basically means we're gonna darken. All right, and so all I gotta do is check mark that, bring my cursor in, and I'm gonna reduce my brush size by pressing the left bracket on the keyboard, and I'm gonna start brushing on the hand and on the jacket to reduce some of the exposure a little bit on the hand and jacket. So let's take a look at the overall before and after of this entire image. This is the before and then the after. And let's actually take a look at the split view before we get into the next image. So before and then the after. On this next image, I wanna showcase how I'm using custom workspaces and a custom tool tab to improve my workflow. But before we do that, I wanna recap what we just learned in the previous image. You'll see in my layers, I already have a bunch of preset stuff that I've already assigned. But once again, we have some bright highlights in the image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Control-1 on the keyboard. That's an empty layer for me. I'm gonna push B on the keyboard. And what I wanna do is I want to brush in just the background. So I wanna brush the background just so that I can get the brightness levels down. And so what I'm gonna do as I'm doing this, of course, is I'm gonna utilize the shortcut keys. And if you remember the shortcut keys are very beneficial so that I don't have to run to my right and double check all the stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hold A on the keyboard, which is my highlights, and reduce that down. And you can see I'm bringing back all that detail. And then I can hold E on the keyboard to reduce the brightness. So already just with that one adjustment, this is the before and then the after. 
Once again, trying to emphasize that you don't have to come over here and make those adjustments and go back and forth. So once you start training your brain to start utilizing these speed keys, it makes everything so much faster. So I'm going to reduce the opacity just a little bit so it's not overkill. But now let's talk about the custom workspaces because this is very beneficial in Capture One. And I think it's very underutilized by a lot of users in Capture One, especially let's say that you're coming from Lightroom, right? So if I come up to Window, what you'll see when I come up to Window, you'll go to Workspaces. You'll go to Workspace, if I can get this working. Let me move this. There you go. My screen recorder was blocking it. We're going to go to Workspace. And then what you'll see is that we have different versions. So let's say you're coming from Lightroom and you kind of want everything to feel like Lightroom. There's something called migration and it'll kind of reset the layout and it'll have everything very similar to what you would get from Lightroom. Now, if I come over here to window workspace, you can do simplified. Okay. And what's great about simplified is that everything's off to the left now. And then off to the right, you'll have your image library. So now I have more real estate to see the image right down in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset my workspace. I'm going to go to the one that I typically use. Okay. And let's actually look at some other, other features. So right now in the bottom, maybe I don't want to have my, my viewer at the bottom or my browser. So if I come up to view, what you'll see is you got browser and I can come up to custom browser. Okay. And when I come into custom browser, I can place it off to the left. So even though I do like to have all my settings to the right, I can now have my settings or my images appear to the left. So that makes my image bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that. Okay. And so you'll see that I still have my tabs over here. And if I want to, I can move them around as I see fit. So in my case, I like to have my adjustments as a second option there. Now, if I come up to the view menu, you'll also see that I can customize my toolbar. So up here, I can decide what tools I want from, from this little area here. So one of the things that I want to add is a new variant. So basically, it just means a copy of one of the images that I have. So I think that's nice to have there. I can also add the copy and apply adjustments as well. And I'm going to think about other things that I might want to utilize. And I think for now, I'm going to leave those as is. I can also come up to view. And then on my viewer, I can decide my background color as well. So I can make it black, dark, and so forth. Now, the way my eyes see things, I like the background to be dark as possible. So that's why I have it set to black. But just know that you can change that. Okay. Now, now that I have my workspace, keep in mind that I can adjust things as far as my tools here where I see fit. So I've been talking a lot about the speed keys, right? And saying, well, you don't necessarily have to come to these menus now. Well, guess what? If I wanted to, I can collapse all of these things that are on my speed keys. And now I can have more real estate for the other items that I want to use. Maybe things like curves and levels and the color editor. So that's something to consider. I'm not saying you have to, but you can always collapse it. Or if you wanted to, you could just drag it out and just get rid of it uh, completely and just remove it if you wanted to. So if I wanted to because I'm going to start using speed keys, I can remove all of these tools. And now I have my layers, I'm using speed keys for everything else. And now I can just jump in to everything else for color gating and so forth. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and reset my workspace really quick. I'm going to go ahead and jump back my viewer to the left. or my browser, I'm gonna place that to the left, there we go. And so now what I wanna show you guys is how to add a custom tool tab and the benefits of a custom tool tab. So I'm gonna come back to my adjustments here and keep in mind guys, you guys can add any tools you want and move them up and down, which in my case, I always like to have exposure at the top and then dynamic range and so forth. But let's say that I wanted to add my own little tab up here. Maybe I want it specifically for color grading. So if I hit these little three dots over here, what you'll see, it says add tool tab. And what I want to do is I want to go to custom tool tab. And this one I want it for color grading. So the thing that's going to ask you, it's going to say, what do you want to name it? This is just an example. I'm going to put color grading and I'm going to change the icon to whatever this icon is. It looks like a paintbrush from here and I'm going to add tab. And so what you'll see is that I have my own little section now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this next to my adjustments 
and let's say that I love color grading. And I, when I go to this tab, that's all I want to see. I don't want to see any of this other junk like layers and white balance and so forth. So when I come into color, what you're going to see is that it's blank. And what I can do is I can right click and go to add tool. And you can literally add anything that you want in Capture One. That's why I love Capture One. There's so much flexibility with the customization. So in this example, what I want to do is I want to add the color editor. And what I want to do is I'm going to come to these three dots here and I'm going to put it um, as a pin tab. So it's going to be at the very top, meaning it's always going to show there. And what I want to do is I'm going to come back to add tool and I'm going to add three curves. And you're probably wondering, what is this guy doing? Why does he need three curves? So I'm going to add three of these. And when I do that, what I want to add is I want to make it into a scrollable area. So I'm going to click these little drop down dots here and I'm going to put move to scrollable area and I'm going to do this for all three. And let me get this last one, move to scrollable area. There we go. And the reason for that is so that I can have all of these little things and I can scroll up and down. So why did I make three of them? Well, I can come in here and I can make this one of my reds, my greens channel, and my blues. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse the color editor for a moment there. And what I can do is I'm going to make this, let me see if I can make this a little smaller. I don't think I can, not on this one. But basically, instead of having to, if I leave it on RGB, I would have to go to reds, then switch to greens, and then switch to blues. If I have them red, green, and blue, I can do my color grading all nice and convenient here. So I'm going to come back to my adjustments. I'm just going to make a new layer really quick. I'm going to press Control 2 to make a new layer. I'm going to come back to my color adjustments. Now, this is just an example. Let's say I want to color grade, and I'm use, utilizing this um, color tab that I just made. I don't have to switch back and forth. I can already have all of my RGB um, color grading for my curves and I can tweak it and utilize that however I see fit. And then of course, once again, I can continue to add more tools. Let's say I wanna add, let's see, the last one would be maybe color balance. And then I can do my color grading there. So these are just various things that I can add if I want. So this color grading, would be very beneficial for me because I like to color grade my images in Capture One before I get into Photoshop. So this is a tab that I'm going to be start utilizing for my future work. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that we've put all this work into making a custom tool tab. I already have the adjustments in the layout that I want. So let's say that you want to rearrange these. Let's say you want vignette above noise reduction, or you just want to add more things like add tools and you start adding all these cool things. Well, one of the most important things you want to do here is that you want to save it as a custom workspace, right? So you put all this work into making this cool workspace that works for you. And then what if you lose everything, right? And so you want to save this. So we're going to go to window. And what you're going to see is we're going to go to workspace. And you're going to see right here, it says save workspace. So I'm going to name this. I'm going to name this Infante. And then I'm going to put um, July, okay? And then 2022. And then I'm going to hit save. And what's great now is that if I ever mess up, I can go to my old custom workspace, which is this one here, okay? I just have to adjust it really quick. This is my old one. And let's say I want to utilize the one I just showed you guys right now. I can go to workspace, and then I can go right here, Infante July 2022. And now I have my images to the left, my workspace to the right, and so forth. And then you can kind of share it if you want. So if you're on a Windows computer, you can share with other users on Windows. If you're on Mac, you can share it with Mac users if you want to share that workspace. On this last image, I want to show you how to use the color editor and how to create a layer from a mask selection. So I've already made a new layer called Blues. I'm going to scroll down to my color editor. And you'll notice that my sky, it's a little bit too bright, right? And so for my taste, at least for my style, I like these moody blue skies. And I'm going to show you the secret on how I do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click the blue sky in my advanced editor. And of course, I can adjust my hue. So I'm going to put this like at 2.3 is fine. I'm going to reduce the saturation. Let's go about eh, 15 is fine. And then the lightness. I'm going to bring this down. And I want this to be nice and dark, right? But I'm capped at 100, which is kind of frustrating. I'm kind of like, dang it. I really want to make it a little bit more darker. So what I want to do is I want to scroll up as long as I'm in my color editor and I've already made my selection. So I'm going to put right here, view selected color range, right? And so what you're going to see is that it's showing me the areas of blues that have been selected. But what if I want to make further adjustments? So I'm going to take that off. 
what I can do is I can come to these three dots as long as I have that color selected. And what you're going to see is an option called create masked layer from selection. So when I do that, what Capture One's going to do is that it's going to select that and it's going to make it into its own mask. So when I push M on the keyboard, you'll see in blue is what's been selected. Now I'm going to remove it from the ground here really quick. So I'm going to get E on the keyboard and erase it from the shoes and from the wall here and back here. And I'm going to come back to the other one because it was also adding the blues over here real quick. All righty. Okay. So I'm going to come back and let's come back to this mask selection from layer option. So I push M on the keyboard. You'll see that right now only what's selected is the blues. So what that does is that gives me the freedom now to come in and decrease decrease the, the uh, exposure a little bit more with curves if I wanted to. Um, or I can even come in because it's selected and it's had a, it's got a nice selection of those blues. I can even adjust the white balance. So if I want to make it a little bit more moody, I can drag it to the left. Now, obviously, that's too much. But the point is, is that I can make further adjustments. And I use this all the, the time, the technique, all the time when I'm making selections of my skies to get at that moody, blue, uh, dark vibe, especially when the lightness isn't enough. I just make a mass selection of that. And then that gives me the freedom to use levels, curves, exposure, just to get it a little bit more darker. So let's take a look at the before and after. So this was the before. I could even just leave it there if I wanted to. Made it a little bit darker. Maybe that's a little bit too dark. But one of the benefits, it's on its own layer. I can just decrease the opacity. And I'll leave it maybe around 50%. So I push Y on the keyboard to take a look at the overall before and after. Before and then the after. Before and then the after. Let me know in the comment section what was your favorite feature from this video. Also, don't forget, I do have a 20% off new annual subscriptions and new licenses for Capture One 22. So don't forget to check that out. You'll see that in the description and also pinned in the comment section. You guys have a beautiful day and I will see you on the next one.